affects businesses, and that is the financial aspects uh, of business. Um, first thing I wanted to let you know is that financial aspects, um, oh, before I actually get started, uh, feedback from you guys, can you hear me clearly, loud and clear? Yes, we can hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello, can you guys hear me? I haven't got any feedback. Yes, we can hear you. You guys can hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, took you like a minute or so to let me know. Okay. Um, I was saying uh, we are covering, um, we're going to cover financial aspects of um, that relate to business and um, entrepreneurship to be more specific. Now, the <clears throat> before, uh, we get started uh, with the actual content. Um, I was uh, talking to Taylor and she was telling me your exams begin uh, at least for finalists. On, is it the 23rd, Taylor? Yes, our first paper is on the 23rd. Uh, what is that paper? When is entrepreneurship? Mm, And that is for finalists only. Uh, continuing students uh, do at a different time. Uh, yes, the timetable thinks I think starts on the thirtieth. On thirtieth. Let me confirm here. Okay. On the 23rd, we have construction marketing. So entrepreneurship is on the 4th of December. Oh my goodness, 4th of December. Yes. And, um, okay. Uh, that is for CM, right? Yes, CM. And the continuing students, when has it been scheduled? I think we're doing, since we share the course units of construction, uh, law, and entrepreneurship, we're doing oh, them on the same day. Oh, I see. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay. okay. So um, we can use next week to do, uh, and I need feedback from you guys like instantaneously. Yeah, we're going to agree on that. We can use the next week to wrap up the project, right? Can we say Friday? on Zoom, uh, same time, um, or we actually do it um, at a different time. What, what is convenient for you guys uh, so that we can have you guys present and, um, or we can do it like two days, uh, but what one of the days in the week uh, that is most likely Tuesday, I would like us to do a test, okay? A second test. Unless you guys don't want that, that second test, I'm, I'm okay with that. And I'll, I'll carry the mark uh, for the first test only. And I changed the law um, that I'll be using. I'll be averaging the two tests if we do a second test uh, because people are abusing the whole concept. I was trying to take the maximum uh, so that you guys can have very good grades, but there are people who deliberately dodge or miss a test. That, that culture, I just can't accommodate. A test is supposed to help uh, show whether you actually understand the content, not only show you, but uh, show yourself. Uh, so I can't accommodate that. I'll just take the average so that those guys are penalized, those that miss tests deliberately. Um, 
So, Tela? Yes. You're quiet. So, next week we have to do a test, we have to do a project. Okay, let's get started with the class. Uh, and uh, we can talk about this at the tail end of the class, okay? Yeah. Okay, so financial aspects of, uh, of business are uh, those things that actually tell you where value is, okay? Um, financial aspects uh, relate usually value to, um, maybe I can open a whiteboard. Hold on, and please give me feedback on uh, whether you're seeing it. I shared it, and uh, I'm going to scribble. Let me know. You've been able to see that, kind of like a sine wave or a cosine wave? Yes. OK, thank you. So yeah, I was saying financial aspects. Um, Okay, so I was saying this out of the way. Okay, good. One financial aspects of business, okay? First of all, you need to know that uh, it is core, okay? Ah, these guys will come late. This is core to, to any business. And usually relates, uh, relates values, okay, of value typically using cash. You guys have all done, all, all students have done a balance sheets, right? Cash flow statements and profit and loss statements. Right? Yes, we did it in our second year. Good. Uh -huh. So you guys just go and revise this stuff, okay? I'm just going to fly over so that... Uh, I don't know how you are taught, um, but I just want to make sure that you guys um, kind of um, are on the same page as, as myself in terms of expectation from this aspect, okay? Um, from the exam perspective, uh, please don't, uh, uh, for, the, for the test, this can be on the test, eh? but for the exam to help you guys study, it is not on the exam, okay? Uh, but in the test, I'm going to put it there. So please uh, study it. Um, so, so what you, uh, what is very important over here is ethics and integrity. Okay, in financial aspects, extremely important. Okay, because like I told you, if you're going to get money, extremely important. People are just uh, trusting you with their money, okay, or with their value, okay? Now, what are the different forms uh, or tools, financial tools that we have? We have uh, a balance sheet. We have uh, cash flow statement. And then a profit and loss statement. I hope we are together until that point. Eh? There's nothing new um, as far as this is concerned. So that is going to be our scope. Okay, this kind of is going to define our scope. And so I'm hoping that today I'll cover balance sheet, okay? Just at a very, very high level, okay? 
uh, or from an applications level. Now, unfortunately, you need to, things have been formalized within the finance, financial domain eh, or business domain. And the reason why things have been formalized is to make, make sure that there's consistency and that there is reusability and accuracy. What I mean by that is when business one or A uh, is trying to track um, how uh, the value that it has, okay? Um, the way it presents a balance sheet or cash flow or profit and loss statement should be consistent with the way uh, people within that domain uh, do their things, okay? There are a few variations. You may find a few variations, but there are general rules, okay? That, that must apply, okay? So consistent consistency is very important. So um, a consistency is important. Although there, okay, some variations accepted. Okay, uh, okay, sorry. So there are typical typical styles. and uh, line items uh, or consist uh, okay to to ensure reusability and to and, and ease and ease of use or auditing okay now you guys should uh, note that whatever you're doing okay in this in this domain it is either for yourself or for somebody else to look at and audit you okay uh, or for somebody else to look at and make a decision such as investors okay so whenever you're doing any financial statement um you should have what they call um okay you guys out of this class should come out with skills of literacy and what do I mean by literacy um, in financial aspects? Um, it, it, it means that you should be able to write uh, any of these uh, financial tools, okay? From scratch for your own business if you need to, uh, so that you can present that at, uh, to auditors or you can present it to investors, okay? Or whoever would want to know how you're doing in terms of value of the company, okay? Uh, the other thing is, you should be able to read it, okay? As an entrepreneur, you may at one point want to invest your cash in different things, okay? So when you're going to invest your money, you have to make decisions on where to invest it and how much to invest it. Now, these decisions are usually informed by, um, by abstracting, okay, it's certain information from companies, okay. One could be uh, the, the, the type of people that are actually running the company. The other could be the financial tools, okay, uh, uh, or the financial, the metrics or parameters that, uh, that, 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 that represent the value uh, of that company. So what you would re request from the prospective companies you would like to invest in, uh, that is if they are not in the public domain, are um, balance sheet, cash flow, and profit and loss statement, okay? By looking at those, you'll get a very, very, very good um, and quick and accurate, that is if they are accurate, but typically they should be accurate by law, uh, because like I told you, financial aspects um, to do with uh, anything actually, um, are very, very delicate. And, and, and if you mess up with those, you, you could be committing federal crimes, okay? That, that are actually um, punished heavily. So if you look at those, um, those, those tools, the balance sheet, cash flow, and uh, profit and loss statement, you should be able to abstract and come up with a decision on whether you think this company either has prospects or is of uh, value currently, if you're looking at currently, is of uh, sufficient uh, you know, of value uh, from your own perspective or so meets your, your, your test uh, for value, okay? So uh, that, that, that is what, what I'm, I'm trying to say here. Now, if, if, if you present your balance sheet in your own style, uh, your profit and loss statement, cash flow, people are not going to understand it, okay? So to, to promote literacy in terms of preparation, is of preparation, reusability, 
and also um, uh, ease of use of those tools, okay, by um, by other people. You want to stick to certain standards, okay? Um, uh, I should have put here standard standard formats. Okay. Um, uh, allows, but we are, there are some some variations permitted. Okay, let's jump uh, right away into the balance sheet because we're getting to half the hour uh, mark. Uh, balance sheet. Do you guys remember what you covered in the balance sheet or you've forgotten? You be honest. Hello? We've forgotten. Okay, like you, you do for all the courses. Okay, so shows the value of the company and where, um, hold on, uh, eraser, okay. Uh, Hold on. Should I just talk? This writing may take me too long. What do you prefer? I just talk or I write or do both. Assets and where this value is derived. I just choose, eh? you went, you've gone silent. Mr. iPhone, the first person close to me, and Dorothy Kakosa, where this value is derived. Okay, these are liabilities usually. I think you can do both. Okay, and equity. Okay, so this is the whole thing. This is the whole point, okay? Whenever you get money, let me give you an example of my case, okay? Assuming I have no other, in, no investments, okay? And I'm a salaried worker. I'm paid by Macquarie University or with company X, whatever the case may be. So if I look at one year, okay? With my wife, we sit down and look at one year, okay? Our value, Okay, in terms of assets, and I'm calling that assets. That's what the that's the name that uh, is given to the value. Okay, our value is going to come from nowhere else, but uh, except from our liabilities and equity. Okay, so uh, whatever we hold as value, okay, will come from liabilities and equity. And what I'm trying to say is. Uh, if, if you look at it from a naive standpoint, if we earn money, and this is not very strict, that's why I'm using the word naive, okay? Let's use a, a very, very, very rudimentary example or an example that a novice would use. A novice is like an ignorant person. Uh, whatever salary I'm earning every month, okay, as take home times 12, let's assume I'm earning uh, 5 million take home. Okay, or I'm earning 2 million take home times 12, let's say 2 million, that is uh, 24 million, right? So that is the money I've got uh, at, the, uh, at the beginning, I mean, by the end of the year, okay? Now that money is going to go into my expenses, is going to go into my uh, assets, okay? Expenses are liabilities, okay? For example, a phone in my in my case, uh, a car, and and, and one seasoned entrepreneur said that uh, your liability should not exceed, uh, I think it was ten percent of your gross uh, of your gross or your net and your and your and your income. 
uh, so that you're progressing forward. I mean, there are rules about that and people talk about it. But what I'm just trying to explain to you, there has to be conservation of value. Uh, what I would call conservation of, uh, I would call it conservation of value, okay? There has to be conservation, conservation of value, okay? And this is how, I and my wife and kids live, okay? So if, 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 if value has moved, okay? If, if something has moved, okay? It has to be, you have to be able to account for it, okay? So we've earned 24 million. If I'm earning 2 million take home every, every month, we've earned 24 million on my side, okay? She's earned whatever value X, maybe 60 or 30 or 10, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter, okay? You add that together, let's say it is 50, uh, in total 50 million that you've earned. Where that 50 million is at the end of the year, okay, that financial year or calendar year, as the case may be, you have to be, things have to be concerned, like thing, you have to be able to account for where it is, okay? If you've purchased a piece of land, that's a fixed asset, uh, at maybe say 10 million, you know that, okay, uh, a fifth of it went into land, okay? If we've got to pay bills, maybe house rent, or we've got to pay electricity if we are not renting, we've got to buy gas for the cars or for the car, uh, or to take a taxi or border border uh, to as transportation, we've got to buy airtime, we've got to feed, you get me? You should be able to account for all these things so that at the end of the day, uh, whatever is of value that came in, okay? uh maybe it, it pushed up that line item that represents the cash and cash is an item in a balance time uh then at another point in time uh these other things went up and then cash went down okay so you have to have that conservation of value okay and that is the spirit with which uh, the balance sheet was uh was created. I hope that is clear to you. Now, uh, so that conservation of value is extremely important. And I'm going to put a point under there. Another thing that is extremely important about the balance sheet is that it is a snapshot uh, that is indicative of value, okay? I'm hoping that the way I teach you, you'll not be able to forget okay indicative of value i don't want to make it too academic uh conservation of value and that is assets should be equal to right should be equal to your liabilities liabilities are typically expenses right typically okay or something you have to, to, to spend on at a certain point in time, okay? Plus equity. Now that equity may be uh, your own equity, okay? Uh, that you, you, you've already built, okay? Over time, let's say carried over from the, uh, from the previous year, it doesn't really matter, or oh, money you've inherited, it depends on your family background and, and its dynamics, okay? Uh, but this is extremely important. There has to be conservation, extremely important. You have to have conservation at any one point in time, okay? So when I say at any one point in time, it's a snapshot. So you don't have a balance sheet that says, uh, uh, a balance sheet for a period this to that. No, you get a balance sheet at a particular point in time. For example, I can, uh, if somebody were to audit my wife and I and kids, uh, that's our value, the value for our family, it would be at this point in time, okay? Today is the 10th, I guess, or 11th, 10th, uh, 10, uh, no, 11th, 11th November at 6.35 a.m., okay? Or 20, uh, 20, whatever, five minutes to, to seven, okay? Where do we start? Okay, at that particular point, you're not going to say between this and this, that would be completely wrong. That applies to profit and loss statement and a cash flow statement, okay? Uh, for a balance sheet, it is at a particular point in time, what do you have, okay? And what is it that you owe? You know the meaning of the word owe? What do you have to pay? 
O is equal to what that party it's a, a word used very much in financial aspects or domain has to pay okay I hope that is clear um, and I hope I've covered all that I need to cover in terms of uh, balance sheet okay uh, not like the preamble, not, not just a balance sheet. So remember, you have assets that uh, represent the value that you have and then uh, liabilities. The other thing I wanted to tell you is that uh, you, you, you have a threshold time or a standard time uh, that helps you uh, threshold time that helps that helps to, uh, how do I put it? Uh, to know what is long-term and short-term. Now, the financial domain decided on one year. I think they, they found that to be a convenient uh, period, okay? Uh, or they just agreed on that. Maybe they voted, I don't know. Now, what does that give rise to? It gives rise to two things, okay? Two terms. Uh, it gives rise to something called long term. And that means it is more than one year. Okay, and then we have short term. They usually use the word current. And I don't want to use the put the word short term, okay? Because I, I told you that in the financial domain, they are kind of very picky about their wording, okay? Uh, so you have to be consistent. You have to learn it or cram it. I don't know, whichever is easier for you, okay? Uh, current is less than or equal to one year. What that means is within a year. Now, this is extremely important, okay? And so your value is categorized based on that, okay? This gives rise to uh, certain things. Uh, uh, let me give you an example of current what? I don't know. I'm just. Come, I hope I'm not confusing you guys. Give me some feedback, because this is the, the way I'm abstracting it. I don't. I didn't want to j jump into the balance sheet and show you line items. Okay, but uh, let me know. Is this confusing? Or, or let's go to something else. What does the silence mean? Uh, let me see. I have Dorothy and Waswa, Vince, very close by, or oh, Vincent. Ah, how do I do this? Uh, no, let me go back to what I was trying to do. Assets. Okay. So we'll have a uh, long-term assets. You need to know what that means, okay? Then you'll have uh, current assets. What, do, what does that mean? Then we'll have liabilities, okay? And then we'll have long term and then um, current okay equity is just equity 
forget about that one for not forget about it but yeah from this perspective okay uh, current liabilities so what what does long term assets mean it means uh, because you have to look at assets as things of value that hold your value but things that you will potentially try to liquidate okay things holding your value that you could potentially liquidate Okay, so what does that mean when you say long-term assets? These are things, I'll give you, an, I'll come back to my family as an example. If we own land, we own uh, vehicles, we own phones, we own uh, clothes, we own furniture, we own uh, electronics in the house, okay? Um, so assuming those are all assets, hypothetically, uh, they are not necessarily all assets. Now, if we are talking about things that are holding our value and things that would potentially liquidate because either we're running bankrupt or we want to do something, okay? So we we'll look at, these are the alternative things that we we'll would look at, okay? Now, within a year, um, if we also owned, let's say, a jet, okay? Uh, I'm trying to uh, drive a point here. And uh, I know there are people who are picky about examples that I give, but I'm, I'm, the, the, the spirit behind it is I'm trying to drive a, a point here. So what I'm just trying to do here is, if you look at a phone and you look at a jet, a personal jet, not just a commercial, a personal one, which one do you think is easier to liquidate or sell off, uh, Dorothy? And get money out of. Hello, Dorothy. She went to sleep. What was the question? You are sleeping. I asked uh, if we, if I have a phone holding my value as a family or phones, and we have a personal jet, a family private jet. Which one is easier to liquidate? A phone. Very good. So phone would fall under, so long-term assets, that, that is the spirit with which you have the concept of long-term and current, okay? So these are uh, difficult to liquidate. And what does that mean? I.e., it is going to take you, takes more than one year to liquidate because the private jet there are not many people who actually uh, may be able to afford or may or even want a private jet but more so may want a second hand private jet okay so you have to think about that okay now these ones are easier To liquidate i.e. takes less than one year and this same thing applies to things like equipment or cars okay if you have a specialized car or equipment it's probably let's say like a mercedes benz it's it's probably going to take a longer time to sell than uh, a toyota okay and, and 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 that is the spirit with which you have these categorizations also with long-term debt uh, or liability liability is kind of like debt that you have to pay or things that you spend on Okay, now long term liability uh, that is things you have that are due 
within one year. You have to pay them up within one year, okay? Are due within one year. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I messed up. Uh, are, are due, uh, that was for down, okay? Are due within one year. Ah, I'm making the same mistake. I think I'm still sleeping. Ah, oh, excuse me. Are due after one year, okay? For example, you take a mortgage for your house, okay? It may be a 15 year mortgage, okay? Th that is a long-term liability. You have to keep paying uh, over time, okay? If you get a short-term loan from a loan shark, uh, probably they want you to pay in a couple of months, okay? That is a uh, current liability, okay? Are due or have to be paid to be paid up within one year oh, 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 in less, uh, within one year. I should have said within one year, within. One year, okay. Now let's go into the, the, the line items for each of these, okay? Uh, so that we we get a good feel. The reason why you have to know these line items is because you can't use a balance sheet or conceptualize it or make good use or meaning out of it if you don't understand the line items, okay? So let's start with uh, assets. So assets have three subcategories. First one is fixed assets. And this one is usually on your left side of the balance sheet. Uh, fixed assets. What are fixed assets? I usually just draw a house sitting on land or a building or whatever, a plant. And then inside there, I know this is funny, but ah, the stance I'm using can't allow me to draw a car in there. Okay, so this is uh, a building or whatever you'd want to call it. That can be a fixed asset, okay? Uh, this is equipment or plant. And this is land. Those are typical items that fall in there, okay? Now, with equipment, you have issues of depreciation and amortization. Do you know what amortization is? It's a loss in value that is psychological. For example, when I buy a car from a bond at 25 million or 50 million, okay? As soon as I drive it out of that bond and a plate, num a plate number is put on it and I drive it out of that bond, in the general public, there is a psychological reduction in, uh, in value because it's now considered secondhand. The true, the, the true value of that car may not have changed at all. I haven't been dented uh, by anyone else. I haven't knocked somebody and dented it, or I haven't uh, malfunctioned anything, broken a radio or broken, uh, I don't know, the AC as I'm using it, okay? within just a few hours. But that amortization may be 10%, maybe 5%, depends on the type of asset you're looking at, okay? But then there's something else called depreciation. Now, depreciation is not psychological. Depreciation is actually, when I start to, things start to wear out, okay? The AC starts to break, mirrors probably are not going up the way they should because of electrical issues. There are things that come with, uh, with age, wear and tear, okay? or some shocks are starting to loosen because of the type of roads I'm driving, I'm, I'm riding on. And, and so the, those are things that associate with equipment or plant, okay? Very important for you guys to know. Uh, now, the other category we have under assets 
Okay, and, and we're looking at long-term assets, sorry. Ah, where did I put, uh, oh God, what did I do? Uh, fix it here. The first thing is long term assets. And we are talking about categories under that, okay? Next thing is intangible assets. These have value, okay? Time is running, I don't know why, but please bear with me so that I finish balance sheets, okay? Now, under this one, we've got goodwill. Goodwill is that extra money that you pay for, okay? For a company or something, because you know it has extra value associated with it. For example, you have two phones, an iPhone and uh, maybe say a Samsung you may want to buy an iPhone and pay higher for it because you know that either it's just psychological that the market is going to give you more for it or you know it's a better quality product, okay? Uh, so, so it's that extra that you pay. And for companies, that is usually associated with reputation, uh, brand loyalty. For example, if we are selling beverages, okay? I come up with my own beverage and Coca-Cola is selling its uh, company and I'm selling my company X. You're going to go for Coca-Cola because there's brand loyalty, it's established and probably they have a good reputation, okay? Uh, brand loyalty. Could drive you there, okay? Uh, and other things, okay? Goodwill, okay? Uh, same example I try to give you guys, but I hope you don't take it in, in a wrong way. When you're looking for a husband, you're looking for a wife, okay? Uh, there's always goodwill associated with that. This person is honest. This person is respectful. This person is smart. Uh, is uh, I don't know what your value system is, but but those are those are things related with goodwill. I'm not saying you're buying the person, but I'm just trying to give an example. Okay. Other things you have are IP, intellectual property. You own that. Intellect. That spelling is is wrong, eh? but correct. It. So find time to correct it. Okay, or it might be that you have a team of, of workers that is also in goodwill, okay? Uh, the company has workers that have been with it for very long and they know what they are doing. They are very dedicated, okay? Uh, the other uh, subcategory under long-term assets is uh, long-term investments. Investments. Such as... Uh, um, you have bonds or securities, okay? Okay. Uh, next is short term, uh, or what we'd call current assets. And these things, by the way, are listed in the balance sheet uh, in the order in which um, it's easy for you to liquidate them, okay? So current assets usually comes before uh, your long-term assets, okay? And the order of those line items under it is also based on that, okay? So very important here is cash. Then there is another one they call cash equivalents. Uh, there is another that is called um, uh, accounts. It's called AR, accounts receivable. You know what accounts receivable are? So you've supplied services, okay? Supplied goods or services, okay? and you're to be paid for it and are yet to be paid for it. If you give guys higher uh, purchase or whatever arrangements, okay, that, that's still uh, to be paid for it.
e.g. extending to customers. So the other you have is inventory. It's more difficult, okay, for you to get rid of. For example, if you mobile phone company, airtime, maybe your or phones themselves, okay? Or if your construction company, the materials, okay, that you buy, okay, could be your inventory. You may stock cement, you may stock whatever phone company. This could be airtime, phones. And then for construction company, that could be materials. Okay, same as a manufacturing company. Okay, the last is prepaid expenses, and those could be electricity bills. That is value you hold. Okay. I hope that is clear. Time is running. Okay, next thing you need to know is liabilities. So liabilities, we have long term, and I'm not going to, to go through these in details. The, the other one uh, I want to do is equities. This is your right-hand side of balance sheet, and this is also equity. Is your right hand side of balance sheet. Now the one I want to do first is equity. So first it has three items in it. Those are line items, okay? You have shareholders equity. And then uh, you have, you think of it this way. Um, because there is something which I want to talk about, treasury shares. You know what a treasury is? Okay. The treasury in Uganda in terms of monetary or currencies is, is the Bank of Uganda. That's where the money, the, the, that's the store. That is the actual place they keep, okay? So uh, a company usually uh, will have shares and those might be public or not, okay? But if we are to look at a company that is having public shares, then the shares that it hasn't sold out to the public are called treasury what? Shares, it, it's keeping them, that's the treasury for the shares, okay? It may have an equivalent of a thousand shares and has only sold out 200. So 800 will be treasury shares and the uh, the 200 will be public shares, okay? So those are treasury shares, okay? That, that we usually track here. Then the other is retained earnings. So you reinvest part of your profit. And you can reinvest it uh, part or all. of your profit. Now, uh, you have, uh, for this one here, you have categories again. You have uh, uh, current, which is your short term. I'm rushing to the end because I wanted to show you, that's the more important bit. I wanted to show you how actually to use the balance sheet and how exciting it is. I don't know that you did that in uh, in your classes before you just did it theoretically, but I thought we, we should understand these line items uh, so that uh, you don't get confused as we use it, okay? So this could be short-term loans. This could be salaries that you pay people. Think about 
everything that you spend on as a company or as a person, okay? Uh, could be utilities, could be what? Taxes, I don't know. Hmm? You have to pay those within one year, right? Uh, I don't know what else, like expenses, think of those, okay? Then you can have some accounts uh, payable, okay? Uh, falling under here, or uh, some may be, usually they call them, some of them they say not payable. Accounts payable, that is money that you've received a good, okay, or a service, but you haven't yet paid for it, okay? And that, that can actually be having utilities in there, okay? And it depends how you present it. And then you have a long term. So loans comes under here again. Uh, you have uh, long term loans, okay? And some other things, you can have accounts payable here also, okay? If you're in a long-term uh, kind of arrangement, maybe for equipment or whatever it is. Do you guys get the point now? I want to go to the use of the balance sheet now, how it is used. Uh, let me know if you're okay with that. Let's have assets here so that we can do our example, which is extremely important. So hang in there, please, guys. Uh, we have liabilities. And then we'll have equity, right? Yeah. Then we shall have shareholders, equity, uh, treasury shares, okay? And then retained earnings. I'm just trying to write like that so that I can save time. Uh, we have uh, current liabilities. Uh, we have short term loan. We have maybe say accounts payable and whatever. I'll just give an example. So I'm going to highlight only what I need, right? Uh, then we have uh, long term liabilities. So this side should sum up to let's say X and this side should also sum up to X at any one point in time for a business or an individual. Uh, so we have long-term loan. I'll use only those as examples and the other things, right? Then here we have current assets. I hope you can do this for your own company, okay? You can say maybe one year after we've run the business, this is what we envision our balance sheet to be. But now you can make also projections, okay? Projections are over time, how do things change, okay? A snapshot is just that particular one, but projections are over time, um, financial projections. Uh, asset, uh, current assets, we talked about cash. Let me see if guys are awake here. Uh, I see Taylor. Taylor is very close. She spoke. Is she still awake? Taylor, what else? We have uh, Joel, Jonathan. What else do we have? Cash equivalents. Okay, let's say an equivalence, an equivalence here, but typically it can be different. We have accounts receivable. Uh, then we have inventory. This is extremely important, this cash. One of the most important line items in your balance sheet. Extremely important. Don't ever forget that. Also for companies, extremely important, this part and this entire section. The others may be there, may not be there, but those three, I mean, those ones I've highlighted uh, will always be there. This is also extremely important inventory and then prepaid expenses. Then we have long term. And this is how you're going to create your 
sheet, okay, balance sheet in Excel. It's taking me less than 10 minutes, okay? I would expect you to do the same, okay? Long-term assets. And then I have another subcategory under there that talks of fixed assets. And you remember we talked about land, the picture I drew. Uh, facility maybe. Ah, whatever, you'll finish the spelling. And then equipment or plant. Okay. Then we had uh, intangible. Okay, you guys will finish that. And then we have the long-term assets. You'll finish those ones also, okay? The things I want that are extremely important are here, depending on the business you're doing. This may be okay, partly, partly. Uh, but these others I've showed you. Now, the example I want to give, are you guys there? And this is what my focus, I wanted, I wanted my focus to be uh, for this class. Let us say uh, company X makes uh, offering. Please hang in there. I see some guys are jumping out and this is where the test uh, questions will come from. I told you I lay the cards on the table. So don't jump out when we're actually starting the test material. Okay, so company X, okay has, uh, let's say, is worth $8,000 in terms of shares, has worth of this, okay? Then it sells out everything. So initially, uh, the treasury shares are going to be what? The account is going to be what? 8,000, right? and don't care what the others are. Then it sells out, uh, let's say 8,000, all its treasury shares. What is going to happen to this? This is going to reduce and become zero dollars, isn't it? Please, I need feedback. Joel, Jonathan, then it's going to receive cash. So this is going to move here, okay? And you'll get what? 8,000. Why I'm doing this is I wanted to show you that whenever cash moves or value moves from one place to another, the balance sheet should always balance. There should be conservation of cash or value, okay? So you'll have either cash moving from one side to another or within one side, you'll have one line item increasing and the other decreasing. In this case, it's from one side to the other, isn't it? So you're having this item reducing and money crossing over to the left and increasing that item. Is that clear? Okay, let's say two years down the road, this company bought back 4,000 shares from the public and it put them in its treasury uh, shares account. Okay, what is going to happen to treasury shares? It's going to jump up from zero dollars to what? Four dollars, isn't it? Or four thousand dollars. Okay, then what is going to happen to the cash? To be able to buy back, you're going to make use of cash, isn't it? Cash is going to go down from eight thousand to what? Four thousand. Is that clear? Patrick, Cheyne. Hello? Mm -hmm. Okay, seems people are maybe lost. Am, am I confusing you guys? So everything that you have this side, okay, will typically come from this side. Okay? Sometimes, you have also things moving from this side to this side, okay? But at times you have something coming from outside into here, and so it should either decrease this and increase that, or increase this and decrease that, that side, left and right hand side. You should look at it that way. Where are these things moving, okay? 
where is this money moving or where are these things moving? Now, another example I, I am going to give you, a loan is acquired from the, uh, by a company from a bank, $10,000. It's coming from outside, right? This is an example of where something comes from outside. What is going to happen? Let's say you're supposed to pay it in five years. It's going to raise your what? Liability side, right? Your long-term loan by $10,000. So this, the balance sheet as we stand is the scale is tipped to your right on the liability side, but we need to balance it. So that $10,000 that you've registered as a liability that you need to pay back is going to be received in cash. It's going to be reflected as a value over here. So cash will go up by what? 10,000. And so you have things balancing out. Is that clear to you guys? So when, when you look at a balance sheet, you need to be able to see uh, where is the value for this company and uh, where is it getting that money from? I told you value is your assets. That money comes from equity and it could be shareholders money and you yourself as an individual, you show shareholder, okay? It could come from that and then you purchase things, okay? Somebody is writing on my screen. Uh, or it may come from what? Uh, it, it, it may come from uh, treasury what? Treasury shares, okay? Or it may come externally from what? From loans. It may pass through this account here and go into something else. For example, you purchase an equipment. You get $10,000, okay? And you want to purchase an equip equipment. What's going to happen? If it's a long-term loan, this is going to go up. And then uh, what? Equipment will also what? Go up. You don't have it as cash. You, buy, you bought the equipment. So this goes up by that same value as this one here. OK? That's it for the balance sheet. Uh, any questions? Have you guys understood? And this, this, this playing around of the balance sheet is what I expect you guys to do. Because if you can't. Uh, have literacy of the balance sheet, you can't understand the dynamics of a balance sheet, then it's all useless and pointless, okay? We should be able to look at a balance sheet and understand where is this guy's value? Is this person more in debt than they, they are? Uh, I mean, than uh, another person? Uh, are they in a good position? Are they financially healthy or not, okay? So I want feedback. I have pa Patrick Chayna and Kasule David uh, very close here or questions. I told you 100% this is going to be on your test. If I see that in the test, you guys are doing really badly, I'll put it on the exam. Is this what you guys did in your, is it second year? You're saying second year? How to use a balance sheet? Understanding it. Can't I have somebody speak? Mbabazi Israel, Isabel, sorry. And Liberty. Okay, Rodney, hand up. Yes, go, go ahead, Rodney. Yes, good morning, sir. Yes, morning, Rodney. Is this what uh, you did in your second year? Um, yeah, but um, for, mm. for the assets, yeah, mm -hmm. I saw you, you were on, on, on current assets and long-term assets, yeah, yeah? Mm -hmm. you are dividing them in terms of, of how easy you can liquidate them, yeah? True. But then, mm -hmm. um, can, can assets of the same asset class, like vehicles, be divided? Huh. You're breaking, uh, Rodney. I can't hear. I don't know that it's my network or yours. And I wanted to set a question in line with your question, uh -huh. so that we see those that have been attending or paying attention. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Rodney? Hello? 
Yes, you are breaking. I didn't hear your question. I, I stopped that you have two types of cars at a company, maybe Mercedes-Benz and Toyota or whatever. Yes. Cars. So, yes. so would you say would you say that, that Toyota is mm. a, a current asset because it is more easily liquidatable than the Mercedes? Uh, it is debatable. I would say it is debatable. Mm. That's a very interesting question, actually. But they say most equipment uh, should probably be put in because uh, they think that assets are, if, if you have really good justification to put a line item under current assets, then sure, go ahead and put it there. Okay? Uh, if, if you say that uh, it, it is, I don't know, you can maybe just say it is a type of inventory for yourself, but probably not because you're not using it to produce directly produce a service or a good. Uh, but maybe you can say other current assets and then you put uh, your vehicles there, okay? That actually sell uh, in a short time. Hmm? I, I guess these are legacy, uh, what I would believe is these are legacy, and legacy I mean like old school, like from long time ago, these are templates from long time ago where a car, owning a car was, was not uh, for everyone, right? It's not like owning a phone. We'll, we'll probably get there some years ahead or decades. Uh, and, 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 and as such, uh, that translates into the ease with which you can sell it because the, the difficulty with which you, you will face trying to liquidate an asset always is directly proportional to, I think, the cost, okay? of that asset. But if things prices usually come down for that, it will probably move from the long-term category or line item to the current asset. So it's a tricky one, a bit a bit tricky. Maybe Rodney should help me set some exam questions. Uh, sorry, test, not exam, exam. Uh, that should be me. We're coming up with uh, good ones. That's a good one, actually. We'll disturb somebody when they're writing a test, right? <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, you tend to want to put it under equipment, stock plant, but yeah, you can put it under, but, but also is a car an asset or it's a liability because you're spending on it, right? Hello? Hello? Yes, so it's a dynamic thing. It's, uh, I don't know, you're spending on it also, eh? But wouldn't it depend on, on the type of, of business you're doing? Definitely, it does. It does. Because yeah. if, 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 if you're doing a transportation business, a yeah, then those are your assets. A is an true. asset. True, true, true. Because they're actually where your value lies, right? It's not just an expense. You're right. Depends on the type of business that you're doing. But, but over and under equipment, uh, because if you most likely you have a big fleet and it's very difficult for you to get rid of that fleet, right? So it depends on the type of business, like you said, if you're running a bus company or a trucking company, you probably have a fleet of a hundred or maybe say 500. And so we look at it from a global perspective, not an individual perspective, okay? Uh, most likely, uh, th those would fall under the the assets, the fixed assets, and under the line item for equipment, stroke plant. You get it? Yes, yes. Yes. And so uh, you, you guys should be thinking that way. You didn't tell me about how you covered things. I just didn't want to du duplicate the next ones. Rodney, you can tell me. Hello? Yes. Yes, could you uh, repeat the question? I, didn't... I said, uh, how did you cover these things in your second year? Is it more of a duplication? Like, is it different? No, I don't it's, want... it's not different. It's the same stuff. So you yeah. guys read about, uh, then we take a holiday on Friday, isn't it? You just read for exam. Read about cash flows and uh, profit and loss. Just review, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So is it agreed, uh, class representatives, Stella? 
I don't know whether MIC and uh, Ludo, Anthony. Um, doctor, can I interject a bit? I, I was raising, I was raising my hand, but uh, uh, oh, it wasn't sorry. being answered. Usually, what happens is it should put you up. Oh, I'm seeing is this Dorothy Kaposa? Kazova? No, this, this, this is Junior. Okay, I see the hand of Dorothy. Okay, Junior, go ahead. Yes, uh, my question uh, is about like the new entrants, like startup, uh, say, companies. Huh? Mm. So uh, as you've said, uh, these balance sheets are made like at a specific point in time, say like as at a specific date. Yeah. And uh, you've said for, for say for our, our business proposals, we are supposed to like make these projections. Uh, don't, like don't, don't mix up things. Projections, <laughs> uh, projections yeah. are over time, right? Yes, yes, because that's where the confusion They're not is assumptions, but you can make a hypothetical, hypothetical assumption that okay. um, let's say you're standing three years down the road. This is what you think. I know the word projection can be used in uh, multiple contexts here. So you're projecting where you will be at a given snapshot in the future. Okay. Okay. And that is it. But projections in the from the financial perspective usually refers to in year one, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, you continue year two, quarter four, like that. And that typically works best with the profit and loss statement and cash flow. Okay. Yeah. I think it's cash flow. Mm, one of them or both. I, I need to, to confirm, but I know balance sheet is a snapshot. So you can tell us uh, probably two or three years from now, we envisage that our account will have this, uh, our fixed assets, that is maybe the land will be at zero, the facility may be zero. So it may be your renting and that should come up within your liabilities, your expenses, right? Uh, your plant or equipment may be this, do you get me? It's an academic okay. exercise, in short. So you have to theorize it, make it theoretical or hypothetical. Mm -hmm. Yes, I hope I answer your question. Uh, yes, yes, I'm good for now. Okay. Dorothy, I saw you raising your hand. Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Uh, you sure. see that um, like let's say if I go to some loan and I bought let's say a piece of equipment, yeah, yeah. So both of them go. Up. Yeah. So how does that balance out in the balance sheet? Because I notice, like <laughs> for let's say if you sold treasury shares, your cash at hand goes up, right? So how does okay. that balance? Uh, out? Hold it, hold it, hold it. You're going too fast, and you're going to mix up things. Don't mute. Don't mute. I just need you to let's one thing at a time at uh, the first part of your question. So assuming my long term, that's a long term loan, I get $10,000, isn't it? Exactly yeah. like this slide is showing coming from outside. So when something comes from outside, it should affect either two line items on the same side, one will go up, one will go down so that you conserve value. Okay. Or it may affect two items or more than even two, okay? But I want to keep it simple. Two items on either side, okay? And either one of them will go up and one will go down so that the net effect is zero. That's my point. Once the net effect is zero, then you have value conserved and hence the balance sheet is valid. So $10,000 comes in. If it's a long-term loan, okay? Then the long-term loan account, if it was at zero, it's going to go up by 10, 10 1,000 or 10,000, okay? Okay, whatever the amount is. Yeah. Then, depending on where you use that loan, okay? If you used it to pay salaries and things like that, then the liabilities bit of uh, your current uh, assets will go down, right? Because you had accounts for those, right? They should go down. 
So the entire balance sheet will be net, the net effect will be zero. But if you used to purchase equipment, your equipment will add a value of, let's say, 10,000. Now you've bought new equipment of 10,000, worth 10,000, then should go up by 10,000 so that you have 20,000. So the left has increased, that line item for equipment, and the right, the loan increased. And that's it. Does that make sense? Dorothy? Okay, I just want to get the net effects uh, zero. How you balance out after getting a, a long-term loan and mm -hmm. then buying equipment. You just wanted because to know the, how you balance. The value. Yeah. Okay, so whatever you had on your, depending on the type of loan, Okay, $10,000 comes in. If it is long term, whatever value you had uh, on your long term uh, loan before the loan came in, add 10000 to that. That becomes your new value on that side for that line item. If you use it to purchase equipment, whatever the value is for your equipment, let's say it is zero, then you purchase equipment worth 10000 okay? then that equipment you will say a line item will be 10,000 plus zero. That gives you 10,000. So it means you've increased your left-hand side and, the, and increased your right-hand side. So your net effect is zero. Both have gone up. So when you sum all the line items, you're getting, going to get the same number on the left and the right. And, and a more complex example would be 10,000 comes in as a loan. Uh, 5,000 is used for equipment and another five for inventory. That means you're just increasing inventory, the account of inventory by 5,000, the one for equipment by five on the left, and the one on the right is uh, loan uh, gone up by 10,000, right? Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, but that means I was not precise. I see where your confusion is coming up. So it shouldn't be this. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, you should have both. If there is an increase, both should increase, OK? If there is a decrease, then both should decrease. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Yes. Left and right. But also, you may have uh, this influence taking place on only one side of your balance sheet, but within between different categories or between different line items. And if it takes place within one side, then you're going to have an increase in one line item and a decrease in another or multiple. Then an increase, you get me? If it takes place on one side, you have to have an increase and a decrease so that that effect cancels itself out. Okay? So this should be on one side. And this is on one side. Okay, maybe let me show it. Assuming this is your balance sheet. And you have this as your divide, okay? If you're affecting the entire balance sheet, you either go up and up, or if you're affecting right-hand side and left-hand side, or you go down and down, okay? You get me? But within, if you go up, the other has to go down, okay? Or if you go down, the other has to go up. Same thing here. This is within one side. So this is the effect of transactions. And conserving value. 
Okay, does that clarify it for you, uh, Dorothy? Yeah, it does. Very good. Uh, any other questions? So we have a class on Friday? That's okay. We can uh, do the profit and loss and cash flow quickly. Okay? Uh, but please work on your projects. Uh, you should be at the tail end of it where you're covering the financial things, okay? Uh, to do with your projects. Is that clear? And uh, prepare also for the test and the final exam. Okay, I'm going to end the session and uh, have a nice day till uh, we meet on Friday morning. God willing. Um, okay, bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.